15 years ago, by the sheer happens of fate, I met a man. Shortly after our friendship was kindled, this man told me something I never imagined to be true. He said, Jordan. Well, in my opinion, Chile will be the next Alaska. The first time I saw a salmon in Chile in the boat, I was sliding into the very first run of the day, and the whole bottom of the river just moved. And everybody in the boat looked down, and I immediately pulled over, and everybody asked me what was that. I said, I'm not sure, but they sure look like salmon to me. And so we just chilled out on the bank, and when I got back to the lodge that day, I talked to the lodge owner and said, hey man, I saw salmon today. He said, there's no salmon in Chile. I said, yes, there is. And I told everybody, and nobody believed me that there was salmon in Chile. And Jordan was the very first person to ever believe me. After Phil originally had told me about Chile, the thought literally never left my mind that I wanted to go to this place and I wanted to see Patagonia and I wanted to experience these fish and see really what it was all about. The beauty of it and the most amazing fact of all is these fish came from the Pacific Northwest. These were Callus and Kalamas, Spring Chinook Salmon, June Hogs to be particular. Some of the biggest salmon in the world that have gone extinct in our local fisheries. And these gene banks and these fish were hiding in the depths of Patagonia. And I just knew one day I had to see it. So I made my first trip to Patagonia back in 2018 and actually made the first addicted video in this region and in this place. I went with my good friend Kale and got just a glimpse of what this place had to offer. On that first trip, I met somebody that would ultimately become one of my best friends in life, Mr. Franco. Franco and his family have lived in this area since there has been humans inhabiting it. When they first started fishing for these salmon and first started seeing them, they were literally throwing metal tubes on a hand line into these pools and pulling out these giant, giant Chinook salmon. So this was such a unique opportunity meeting Franco and becoming the friends that we did because his family has literally been there watching these fish evolve since the day they started swimming up these rivers. Nací y crecí en el área de Mañiguales. Mi abuelo fue una de las primeras personas en atrapar salmón rey en la década de los 90. En aquellos años no se ocupaban señuelos, no habían señuelos en Patagonia. Ellos mismos los fabricaban con acero o cuchara. Desde pequeño he dedicado gran tiempo de mi vida al estar en las montañas y el río. Definitivamente la pesca del salmón real me ha dado un punto distinto de la vida. Estoy muy agradecido con el agua y definitivamente amo los peces. Franco, you're the man and this video could not have happened without him. Got him, oh my God. Guys, I'm really scared right now. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I got a really good hook in him, I didn't yank. I just reeled into him. This is the biggest salmon I've ever seen in my entire life. He's trying to break me on the wall. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a big fish. Head first. Yes, addicts. Woo! Oh! Oh! Oh, my God. Come back for it. Oh, my God. That fish was 60, 70 pounds all day. Welcome to Tai, the Salmon Chronicles of Chile.
With the 24 hour journey passing in the blink of an eye, we finally touched down in southern Chile. Immediately the reality sets in that we are so, so far from home. But I'm quickly surprised by the feeling that for some reason, somehow, I am home. And now the work begins. We've made it. We're in South America. We are in Patagonia and we're at Franco's house. Now it's time we get the gear ready. It's time to unpack the absolute massive amount of gear that we've brought on this trip. And the funny part I find on trips like this and any big fishing trip, when you're going into an environment that you're unsure of is you take way more than is necessary. So rightfully so, we got everything prepped. We got to Franco's home. Now it's time to get ready to go catch our first Chilean salmon. The first day of any fishing trip has to be the most nerve wracking for, for anybody, for any style of fishing and in any environment. I knew coming into this, some of our biggest trials, even though we had somebody on the ground and that was from this area that had connections that knew people was the equipment that we were going to need to make this trip happen. We're pioneering this fishery. We're doing styles of fishing that have never been seen in this part of the world. And we're using techniques and requiring certain things that aren't available to us. We don't have the resources to fish like we do at home, but we need to use these techniques and we need these things to be successful on this trip. Yeah, I tell them to go a little closer to those trees. Half the distance. So about the first hour goes by, and I'm starting to realize our biggest issue being in this place and being in a foreign country is going to be number one, the language barrier. Our friend who has the boat, Sebastian, doesn't speak English. I'm trying to translate through Franco to Sebastian to try to correctly fish. The style that we're fishing and the way we're fishing with these flashers is so technical. From the speed, from the depth, from the direction you're trolling across the current, it all matters. We don't have rod holders, our depth finders aren't set up, and we are not prepared other than with our gear and our ambition to try to catch one of these fish. So perfect. 42 feet? Yeah. I'm at 27. Where you at, Franco? Go 35. But one thing I know is for certain already, on day one, we're going to need a little bit of luck on our side. Oh, I got a fish. Yeah? Fish, fish, fish. Come on. Oh, loose. Oh. Come on. Yeah? Yeah. Fish? I got it. No. Oh. No. You Bottom. set the hook. Franco, Yankee Poo. Feel the mouth of the chai, king, oh, the blue shiny. <laughs> What's the gringo flushers? <laughs> there it is. Oh, 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 just got slammed. Drop some line, drop a little line. Oh, just got whacked finally. There it is. There oh, it is. oh, it came back for it. Yep, maybe reel it up a couple of cranks. Reel it away from it. Let's go, let's go. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Just hooked the first fish of the trip, you guys. Woo! Right at the top of high slack. Just ripped the Brad's fish. cut plug. Oh! Feels like a good fish. Have not laid eyes on it yet, but we got one. We got him! Nice fish, Whoop. nice fish. Really nice Ooh. fish. Woo. Very nice fish. We forgot the net today, you guys. We got a very small net not gonna fit this thing. I don't think he's done yet, but it's worth a try. Oh boy. Okay, head first. No, no, no. Keep Grab the tail. Yeah. Grab the tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that it? As soon as he runs, let go of the line. Oh boy. Oh, that's a big fish. 
That's a big fish. Yeah. Oh. Okay, four is the way. Come on. Come on, hook. Stay in there. I do not like this situation. Very bad to have that fish's head out of the water like this. It's our only option. Oh, oh he's barely hooked. Yes, baby! We did it! Brother! We did it! Day one! Wow! Now everybody, we do not plan on keeping very many fish on this trip, but look at this. We dude. want some fish to eat, and we need to live and eat on this trip, so we're taking this one home. <laughs> Brother, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, addicts. <laughs> Words cannot describe the feeling and emotions that course through an angler's body in a moment like this. We've traveled to the other side of the planet in search of this fish, and now it's in our hands. The pressure's off, everybody. Fish number one. Get another one. It's obvious now our plan of attack on this trip is going to work. And it's this amazing feeling of success and mainly relief that we've actually keyed in on what we came to do and it's gonna work. We have a shot at completing our goal and catching the fish of a lifetime while we're here in Patagonia. But with all this success and all this relief, one thing is on all of our minds. What do these fish look like on the inside? All right, everybody. Let's see what a Chilean salmon looks like inside. Went and bought our $5 fillet knife with a little sharpener, Chile style. Okay, moment of truth. Everybody ready for this? <sighs> Look at how beautiful that spring chinook meat is. That is incredible. All right, let's get the real look at this thing. And the layers of fat. Look at this. Guys, the, just this beautiful, the, the, just the smell. The texture, how firm that meat is. Look at that color in the sun. Wow. As any fisherman knows, there is nothing better and there's nothing more quality and wholesome in life than sharing the day's catch with the people that all made it happen. And I have to say, and it's not just for this video, these are hands down one of the tastiest salmon I have ever put in my mouth in my entire life. Things couldn't be better, our bellies are full, and now it's time to get our job done for the evening. So we head to the hardware store. We need two by fours to build our rod holders to mount to the side of the boat. We need our depth finder set up, somehow mount the transducer back to the back side of the boat. And we need to get set up with the tools necessary to target these monster salmon. Dog shit in there. I do not want to be. <laughs> Cars. 
Day number two is underway, and we are loaded for bear, ladies and gentlemen. So what we've done here is I've mounted two rod holders to each two by four, and we're using something as simple as possible, two C clamps to attach these things to the side of the boat. I've taken the transducer for the depth finder that we've brought, mounted it to a two by four, and we C clamp that to the back of the boat. And at this point, I am just praying that when we hook the fish we came for, that this entire setup doesn't just get ripped off the boat. One of the main sponsors on this trip was one of our longest standing sponsors here at Addicted, and that is Short Bus Flashers. Having these tools and having these tactics that would have been perfected in the Pacific Northwest here in Southern Patagonia is, is a step above. I already know that these things work. It's, a, it's made to catch salmon, and the product that JT makes is one of the very best to go out and target these kind of salmon, and especially big ones. These flasher presentations and the way that they attract fish and create that school feeding kind of presentation that these things do is one of the easiest ways to attract those big fish and attract fish that are in that feeding mentality in tidal water and exactly in the kind of situation that we're in right now. So JT, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Let's see how these things work. First fish on the graph, everybody. Saw one roll as soon as we came out here. Things are looking good. There's a fish, there's a fish. There we go. I got it. Fish on everybody, first one of the day. I looked over at Franco's rod and I thought he was hitting bottom. It was a very soft fight, very soft fight, and then just in. We got a really hard outgoing tide still, so we're just holding in the current, letting these fish come to us. We're like 0.5 miles an hour, and it worked. First fish of the morning. Okay, you step one, one step back. Yeah. Big chancha. Big chancha. Big chancha, dude. Ooh, ooh. Head down. Okay, now lift. Straight up. Yes, yes. Oh, God. Franco! Franco, Franco, Franco! Oh, God! Oh, oh. Too big, too big! Oh, there you go. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay, we were gonna release that one anyways. Yeah. Brother! <laughs> Maybe we make the net a little bigger next time. Fish number one. Way to go, boys. <laughs> okay. So obviously, we're using a homemade net that Franco made years ago. <laughs> and it didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> About the same size fish as yesterday, but all is well. That fish is gone, let's keep fishing. People in this area have never seen this style of fishing. I can already see just by the few fishermen that are out there, we're turning heads. They're seeing these big flashy things. They're seeing these little lures, these Brad's lures on the back end of these flashers, and they have no clue what's going on. It's revolutionary, and we're revolutionizing and pioneering a fishery in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Whatever you are. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. oh, brother. What just happened there? I think we need an instant replay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it was in the net, so I guess we can count it. Dave's first fish in Patagonia. Yeah. That was a monster buck. Monster male salmon. Monster. Monster! Ow! Ah! He's got a big, uh, he's got a hook. Damn it. Lost our super bait. Yeah. So on this trip, as you guys see, I had one of my very best friend Dave's come along. I told him where we were going, I told him what we were doing, and he said, bro, I really want to go. You need an extra hand? And of course, I had to say yes. And it definitely doesn't hurt. He's one of the best sandwich makers I know. Oh, 
Oh, he's busting water. Jordan, get up here, buddy. Peel it line! Oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. He's really feeling it. We need to chase it. Hey, come on. Oh, 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 oh. That's it, dude. Look at that. That is a hot fish. Beautiful. Damn. Oh, there she is. A beautiful shiny king. Oh, come on in, sweetie. That's right, buddy. I think it's safe to say this is the day that we have all dreamed of. We are in the middle of a full-on smackdown. Look at that thing. Holy Crazy smokes. Boy. There's nothing quite as satisfying in salmon fishing as the perfect execution of a plan. Today was the day we traveled across the planet, adapted to our environment, applied our knowledge and techniques, and experienced a day of fishing that none of us will soon forget. the plans have changed. We've lost our watercraft. Again, like I said before, I knew coming into this trip, this boat situation was going to be the biggest dilemma of all. The people in these areas, the people that were renting these boats from use these things for a living to work in the salmon farms that are located in these regions and they need them for work. So we're doing our best to find these boats. Franco is putting in as much effort as he possibly can to find, to use his resources and to find us a watercraft to use in these areas that we're trolling. But we ran out of luck. We lost our boat for a couple days, but we got a backup plan. We're in the canyons now, we are in Taiyi Canyon, and it's time to hunt for the giants. bad place to exist. Awfully big change from where we've been the last few days. We're back in the home waters in the place where I've caught my first Chilean salmon. Think we can do it again? Yeah. <laughs> Come back for it. Oh my God, I have goosebumps, you guys. Oh my God, that fish was 60, 70 pounds all day. Oh my God, he took a good swipe at it too. 
The unmeasurable and uniquely raw beauty that this land of Patagonia holds seems to create an overwhelming sense of mystery in the hearts of those who are willing to explore it. Every inch of this powerful landscape tells a story. Stories of the past, stories of the present, and stories of what still is to come. One can't help but feel like such a small dot on this earth in a place like this, but it's that small dot that I couldn't be happier to be. Well, not what we're looking for, but this is an absolute Dunner of a freaking rainbow. Oh my God, what a beauty. Not what we wanted, but we'll take it. There he is. Looks like a jack. Giant, giant brown trout. Holy crap. <laughs> we'll take it. Not disappointing at all. Not what we were looking for, but oh my God. You have to travel across the world to catch a trout like this. Holy crap. Look at that. Big male. Incredible. Look at the color on that cheek. Oh, wow. Later, gator. That's a win. One thing that fascinates me about salmon in the world, and no matter where they live, is the culture that they bring to the communities in the area. For a fish that's only existed in an area for 40 years, the way it's changed the people's daily lives, changed their eating habits, changed the way they interact with their family and their friends, and changed their way of life is, is mind-blowing to me. And it, it just goes to show how special fish are and, and it's how important it is that these fish live in areas and, and create this culture. It's one of the most beautiful things in life that I've ever seen. The evolution of culture, the evolution of fish, and the evolution of mankind is happening right before our eyes in this incredible place. Y la receta favorita de Salmón chino, cebolet a gusto, sal a gusto, dos huevos y cuatro cucharadas de harina. Eh, receta que hacía mi madre cuando éramos niños, cuando mi padre pescaba. Y hablo de unos 50 años atrás. We're having a fancy dinner tonight. And this is the drink of the country. This is pisco. A bit of mayo, a little bit of tomates, homemade chili sauce, a little bit of avocado, a little bit of rice. Makes for a fantastic ending to the day. Mm. If you've never had a battered salmon, it's worth a try. It was absolutely delicious. Very simple, brings out a very, very nice flavor in the fish. One well, that's different. It doesn't taste exactly like how we make salmon every time. So it's a great way to have a taco. Great way to have a little rice dish. But nonetheless, great way to enjoy an amazing fish. So it's been a good day.
Well, the shape of the canyon has obviously changed. Looks like we're going into the land of the kings. I see a pool just above us here that I'm having a hard time finding the way to. So this looks like the easiest route. Only one way to go. That's down. This isn't a hole, but it's a good one. We're looking for the next one up, but we've damn near made it. This one looks amazing. I'm not gonna pass it up. We got about five hours of daylight or so. It took us about probably two hours to get up here, so we probably have three hours to fish. I'm gonna make the best of it. This is looking good. Okay, here it goes. Well, hole number one is seemingly empty. I'm gonna get up on this rock and take a look down into the deep part of the hole just to make sure there's no fish. But after that, it's time for the glory hole. glory hole and right as we walked up two giant salmon rolled any bets on that we get bit first cast I bet Okay, I lose the bet, but second cast, second cast is a good one to bet on. I literally got hit on the fall. Could have been a trout or something, but literally as that, that spinner hit the water, fell about six feet into the column and got smacked. Got him, got him, oh my god. Guys, I'm really scared right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I got a really good hook in him. I didn't yank, I just reeled into him. This is the biggest salmon I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my god, I have goosebumps. Oh my god. Oh my God. My heart is pounding right now, everybody. He's trying to break me on the wall. Okay, I got him. Oh my God, he's got me way up in the wall, you guys. In between a bunch of rocks. Come on, please come out. Oh my God, no. I'm gonna just feather him. Oh my God, I think he broke me, you guys. I can't tell what's going on. Oh my God.
I can't tell. I can't tell what's going on. It feels like he's still on there, but he's stuck. Oh my God, that fish was like 60, 70 pounds, dude. I don't know what to do, everybody. I can feel him there still. I almost want to swim across the river. He's wrapped around a rock. But I think his head's like wedged in there to where he can't like move. I told Marlon to my friends that I knew the next world record was gonna come out of this place. And I truly, to my heart, believe that. And hooking that fish and seeing it and, and witnessing and getting to experience a moment fighting that creature is, is a moment that nobody can plan. You can't, you can't play that scenario out in your head. You can wish for it forever. You can think about it every night you go to sleep, but you never quite expect and are prepared for the moment that it actually happens. The fish was so big. The head was as big as my torso and the way it took off and the way it handled me, it absolutely kicked my ass. It's something that I'll never forget. And it's a moment in time that I'll replay in my mind forever and ever until the day I die. Here it goes. God, I can't see it. Bent the hook out. Defeated. I'll do that 10 times over for that fish. Instant replay. That thing, I don't even know. I've never seen anything like that. Guys, I'm really scared right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's a giant log. You guys can see me standing on it over there. Doing it under it, around it, back down river along the wall, and then bent the hook out and eventually. Shit. Shit. All cleaned up after the aftermath. A little fun fact just for everybody out there. Those are Sean's chonies. I uh, TMI, but I wasn't wearing any. And I must say, for the record, Sean did not want to give up his underwear. I absolutely made him. As disappointing as the loss of that fish may have been, I crawled out of the canyon that night with my chin held high and proud of the fact that I did everything within my power to try and share a moment with such an incredible creature. Laying eyes on such a creature just added fuel to the fire in our hearts and pushed us forward further into the unknown. Cowboys. It's a gaucho. It's a gaucho? Yeah. That's where we are. It's a gaucho. <laughs> We're getting better with each day, everybody. Every day we get a little bit better at this. Except walking. We're getting worse at that. Finally, 
we're back in the boat. We're back in the big water, expectations are high, excitement levels are extremely high, and we all know that at any moment of this day, our wildest dreams just might come true. Let's go 40 on the backs. Put it down. Yeah. We're back in action, ladies and gentlemen. Day number three of trolling. Today's the day. We got wicked winds, as is always the case in Patagonia. It's time to find a giant. Okay, let's get ready, guys. We got a really good mark. Oh, there he is! We got him! We got him! Yes! Oh, God! I love you, Hobbit Bird. Oh! Spoke too soon. It's okay. It's okay. Let's get him back in, boys. Hey, good job. It happens. Let's get him back in. So today, we're trying to be as effective as humanly possible. We're running 360s on the three rods out the back, and we have triangle flashers with cut plugs and super baits off the end of every single one. The triangle flashers I know that are fishing up front fish a lot slower. The 360s out the back have a lot of movement and create a lot of disturbance in the water. And with them paired correctly together, which I've learned over time, fishing in areas like the lower Columbia and in buoy 10, that having both setups, as long as they're weighted correctly, and as long as they're set up correctly to run with each other, it can be an extremely effective way to find these fish. Everybody. So instead of normally we throttle into them at home, <laughs> we don't have a 50 pound, 50 horse motor in this size. <laughs> Dude, this is a... Oh, that's a mean fish. We got another one on the board. Short bus for the win. Very scary moment. We've checked every single little village, every single town. We can't find a big net down here. So, so if we do get a really big fish, we're gonna have to somehow figure out how to get this thing boated. We can get it on camera for you guys, but this fish is not moving. He is, he is staying down. I've got it pretty tight too. He's he still at 60 stone? 40. 30. 30. Oh. oh. Oh, I saw a tail. Oh, I'm so nervous right now, everybody. I'm so nervous. We're going to see this thing bling in the sun any second now. I'm going to get this ready just in case it is that big. We're going to resort to a tail wrap. That, I'll have it in my hand ready to pull tight. Oh, 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 it's huge! It's huge! Oh! Hey, oh, my God. Oh, oh, he's back to the bottom. So far, the longest fight we've had, huh? We've been landing these fish really quickly because I think these short bus flashers wear them out. But this is by far the longest and most intense fight yet. Oh, I'm so scared right now. We're basically just gonna do a tail wrap on this fish, try to lasso it around his tail yeah, so that he can't kick away. Okay, okay. Oh my god, that's a beautiful fish. Oh my god, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, he's gonna go towards the motor. I'm gonna neutral out. Oh god. Okay, I'm gonna bring him in. I have to say, the way we're having to land these fish is so unconventional, it's not even funny. I know a lot of professional fishermen and, and well-seasoned fishermen out there are absolutely laughing and are appalled by the way we're having to do this. The biggest fish of the trip is three feet from our hands, and we're trying to lasso the thing's tail like a damn calf in the rodeo. Dude, he's freaking very strong. Two feet, he's right here. I got wait. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm in neutral. Oh gosh. Oh god. This is nerve wracking as heck, you guys. This is hands down the heaviest fish I pulled in. Oh, 
We did it! Biggest fish of the trip by far. <laughs> so amazing. Alright. Oh. <laughs> we did it. We did it. This is a huge fish. The thing that's overwhelming about these fish to begin with in this area is how high of quality they are. For every inch they are long, they're an inch wide. And the size of this fish, the scenario of how we had to land this thing, and the teamwork that it took to even put this thing to our hands, was just a feat. I mean, we're on the other side of the planet. I'm not going to stop saying that. And we just caught the fish that we've all dreamed of. Over 40 inches long, one of the most incredible creatures I've ever seen in my life. And the overwhelming feeling sets in immediately that, boys, we did it. <laughs> I love you, brother. Woo! Oh, that's a pig. All right, big fella. Thank you so much. Woo! They still exist. Woo! Team! Yeah! <laughs> Franco! Yeah! Woo! Okay. Took on a lot of water there. Just had to pull the boat out and get the stuff back in the water. Woo! But thank goodness luck is on our side because there's still more daylight and there's still more fish to catch. Oh, we're almost hot. I'm good at this game. Is that it? Yeah. Oh. Almost hot. Okay. Charlie, you shame this triangle out. Yeah, I like the triangle. Triangle's not a particular one of my fancy today. Oh, right as you said that. Oh! Oh, 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 shot! Give me that! Give me that! Way to go, brother! The cameraman, Sean, with the win. Good job, buddy. I just said, let's change, just, let's change the triangle. I don't like it, it's not working. He touched the rod. He's our magic man today. Touches the rod and we got one. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that head shaking. Oh. Oh, he's here. He's here. Oh, small fish. Small fish. Small. Very shiny though. Very shiny fish. That is the chromest fish we have seen so far. Look at that thing. Wow. What a stunner of a fish. I got it. So far we've kept two fish on this trip. You guys have seen how amazing the meals turned out from those. We might keep this one too. It's a little bit smaller. We'd like to let those big genetics go. All those big fish we recommend, especially if you're with anybody else in Chile, let those big fish go and let those genetics continue. Killing these things back home is what took them out of our gene pool. And the reason we don't, and the reason we no longer have any of these big fish at home. So, but this one here is a pretty small size, considering. Good job, Franco. That's my boy. Wow, what a fish, dude. And it's bleeding really bad. Great one to keep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Take this fish on a few baby. Now don't know it's Sean. Just... Got a boy. Oh, it's a big one, he says. Way to go, brother. Said it suspended. He knew what to expect. He says, I know what's about to happen. I'm about to hook the biggest salmon of the trip because my name's Sean and I catch fish. Okay. We haven't seen him yet. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Sean, what is this? Oh, it's a monster! Oh my god, that's awesome. Careful, careful. Yeah, good job, Sean. Good job, Sean. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Rope is right behind you, Franco. Whoa! Oh! 
broke. Broke. It touched the boat. It, we, it counts. <laughs> we touched the leader. It counts. Yeah, brother. Right there. Good job, There's Sean. Land. Woo! I have to give a huge shout out here to my man, my surrogate son, Mr. Sean, in the background. Sean is the guy that you guys see make these videos. He edits them, he films them, he follows my crazy ass all over the world and makes sure to always be prepared and always be on point. And I have to say, he was one of the biggest contributors to making today happen. I don't know if you guys noticed in the replays of these last few fish that we caught, he touched the rod about three or four seconds before every single one of these fish that we caught. He's had the opportunity to fish around so many well-rounded fishermen and seen so many different kinds of body of water and taken away so much knowledge from it. I have to say I'm so proud of him. Sean, great job on this trip, great job on this video, and nice freaking fish. Today was the day where teamwork, determination, and pure mojo came together, creating a day that four lifelong fishermen will look back on and say, boys, that's what fishing is all about. So far, I say that everything has probably gone exactly to plan. I couldn't be more proud. I could, my expectations are completely met, other than the fact that we still want to catch that fish that is of record size. There's fish here I know that are over 100 pounds. We haven't seen them. We've seen ones that are close. We've got to tackle some of the biggest fish we've ever seen in our life, but the opportunity still is there and in the air to catch the fish that we have all dreamed of and that the world wants to see. Help! 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 <laughs> well, we finally have a boat again. That's the boat, but that's our car now. It's stuck in the mud. We gotta get her pulled out because when the tide comes in, the car's gonna be completely flooded, but things are looking good. I know as soon as we get in the water, that's been the, the hardest part of this trip, and especially making this movie so far, I have to say, is just the pressure and the timing and trying to get everything organized. We're in a place where people don't do this stuff. This is, we're pioneering this fishery down here. And there really is no options for, for any sort of help or, you know, we're trying to rent boats, we're trying to find the right equipment. So just trying to stay calm, not get pissed off. What's gonna happen will happen just the way it should. And now our friends are stuck. Started, guys, with about 20 yards, and hooked the first one. It's gonna be a good day. Small one, Jack. Jack salmon. Jack salmon. Didn't even know they came this size. Oh, still strong though. Here we go. It's the last day, the bite is on, and we are right in the middle of it. Big, 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 big. I got big fish, guys, big fish. Woo! First big one of the day, we lost a jack earlier, but this is a real one. We have not moved this thing, it's done nothing but take line so far. Good fish. Good hooks. Oh, there he is. Oh. Got him. Wow. Whoa. 
What a stud, Franco. Woo brother! Look at that, everybody. All Got about it. 20 pounds, not the biggest one, but it's what we're looking for. This is definitely a little bit different one coming from a different river. I'm guessing this is one of the main river fish. A lot more spots on this one. Bigger adipose, different style of fish. Yeah, later buddy. Woo! Franco, good job. Fish number two. Ah. I could just feel that one coming too. As we make the turn, started doing our upriver troll. The tide's just starting to come in. As you can see, there's no current going out. Sitting right in place, so it's on. One thing that's obviously so imperative with fish management, uh, especially for Chinook salmon, is just the idea of only taking what you need. The fish are not gonna survive the sort of commercial fisheries and the sort of pressure that sport fishermen put on them combined and still be able to survive and procreate and create these healthy environments and these healthy fisheries. One thing about Chile is they do not allow any commercial fishing, which I think is the number one reason this place will survive. And please, please, to the, to the country of Chile and the people of Patagonia, do not ever commercial fish these fish. It's not worth the money. The resource that's created, the, the economy that's created by sport fishermen, and the amount of beauty that's created, and, and environment and culture that's created by these fish being there and being healthy, is, is there's no, you can't put a price tag on it. I think what he needs to happen in these areas is there needs to be education and people need to know that you do not need to take more than you need. But the proper management of these Chinook salmon is so important and I'm so happy to see that it's actually a mindset that they have down here in Patagonia. Finally, guys, it's been hours since that last fish we just saw. We're getting really discouraged, starting to talk about dinner plans, starting to talk about getting the heck out of here, but not anymore. Oh, oh wow. Dude, that is incredible. Yeah, you just keep tailing like that. <laughs> the amount of water that thing moves with every tail kick is impressive. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Look at that. Shark. Woohoo! Oh, God. Look at what a pretty one. Yep, yep. Got it. Good job, Franco. Good job. Look at that thing. <laughs> Good job, boys. Hell yeah, look at that fucking tail. <laughs> Got it. Woo! Heck yeah, you guys. High five, world. Woo! Good job, Dave. Way to stick with it, everybody. God, where would we be without this rod today? Three. Oh, there he is! The small one. one? Yeah. Yeah, got Yep. Tiny. Whoa. Hold it really close. Hold it really close. <laughs> really close. <laughs> Make my head look really small. <laughs> I must say, a lot of special things happened on this trip. But walking away from it, one thing in the back of my mind that I think I cherish the most is, is seeing the evolution of these fisheries. Let's not forget this, everybody. These wild fish come from our local hatcheries that are so controversial in the Pacific Northwest. People in, the, in our local government and people in this country, in the USA, are trying to stop the programs that create this sort of evolution and this sort of fish. 
we live in a place where things have been hurt by man. And with a little bit of help from mankind and a little bit of love and cherishing of the resource, you can see things like this happen. It's been so unique for me to get to experience through knowing Franco and the times that I've spent down in Chile watching these runs progress. They planted these fish one time and now they're getting a run of fish four seasons out of the year. They're getting winter, spring, summer, and fall Chinook in these rivers, again, from one hatchery plant. And, and I have to say, just as a human being and as a fisherman and somebody who loves the outdoors, being able to see this happen, being a, a small dot on the earth and being able to witness the beauty that Mother Nature holds is an is a experience that I will never forget and one that I cherish more than anything in my life. One last chance to find the record-sized Patagonian salmon that we've come so far for, we headed to a new river, boatless, out of options, but determined to give it our last best effort. We're here in Jurassic Park. Hopefully we catch a T-Rex. T-Rex or Velociraptor? T-Rex. Brachiosaurus. I'm sticking with the monster lure. It's the exact same one. The hoochie's wearing off from all the fishing and all the trout biting it. But I'm sticking with it. Tried and true. Feel it, addicts. This is where it's gonna happen. This is where it's gonna happen. Come on, fishy! I'm so excited right now. I just like being here. It's unreal in here, dude. Okay, everybody, today's mission is to be diverse, and we just figured out a very diverse plan. Okay, this is, I'm giving credit for this one to Franco. We're doing a double rod, bank plunk, body plunk. Ready for the first ever caught belt loop fish. It's gonna work. <laughs> the drag, perfect. Yep, perfect drag. We're good. It's nearly impossible to put into words exactly what we have all experienced here together on this monumental expedition to the wilds of Chile. But without a doubt, there are a few things that stand out in my mind that we should all recognize simply just as human beings. The first is, the most primal instinct of all, fishing, is one of the most incredible activities known to mankind. The fact that no matter the color of your skin, the language you speak, or where it is that you call home on this earth, there is one simple thing, fishing, that has the power to bring us all together and show us the beauty that exists still in this world. The second thing I hope we can all take away from this is how important the salmon species is to this world. From the culture these fish create, to the life and bounty they provide us, and to the infinite love and passion they instill in the hearts of those who are willing to follow them. The Chinook salmon is a species that deserves every effort possible by man to ensure they always thrive and have a safe place to call home on this planet. Lastly, and quite possibly the most important fact of all, is that the giant kings of old still rule kingdoms on this earth to this day. People of the world and everybody watching this video, I wanna thank you so much for supporting our channel, Addicted Fishing. 
and allowing us to follow our dreams and show you places and things in the world that are as beautiful as what we saw in this video. It was a true pleasure making this. I hope you all enjoyed it. And until next time, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.